Hi there! Ever heard that Davidians don't pay their tithes? We'd like to tackle this misconception in this video series with some points you may not have considered before, all of course from the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. First, let's talk about where we are lying. One is that preaching the three angels' message is the goal and purpose of the organization and the people of God should not be distracted in doing so. I think we're aligned there. Second is that the offerings and tithes should be given to support the ministry as those who are called to this purpose spend their strength and energies in promoting the gospel to a dying world. We're aligned there as well. As commanded by God, there is no other place our tithes and offerings should go other than to the storehouse, according to Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, located in the place which the Lord shall choose, according to Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 14. Some of the misconceptions. The misconception starts where people have certain misunderstandings concerning tithing itself and whether or not Davidians pay tithe. Let's start with the misconception number one, the meaning of the storehouse. We agree that the storehouse is the only place to send one's tithes and offerings, so it is imperative that we discover the location of God's storehouse today. We must then agree that the storehouse today is not in the same location it was during the time of Mal that Malachi chapter 3 was written. What caused the location to change? To understand this, we must understand that the storehouse is not just a physical location, but there is a spiritual application for the storehouse as well. The Bible says that the storehouse must be stocked so that there would be meat, quote-unquote, in God's house or nourishment. The meat in the house would obviously be for feeding the ministers from a physical perspective, but to also feed the ministers and the people in God's house spiritually as well. What is spiritual food? Jesus himself answering his disciples after bringing him physical food says in John chapter 4 verse 32, I have meat to eat that ye know not of, which he explains in verse 34 is, quote unquote, to do the will of him that sent me and to accomplish his work. Adding commentary, the spirit of prophecy comments in Desire of Ages, page 190, paragraph 5, that as his words to the woman had aroused her conscience, Jesus rejoiced. He saw her drinking of the water of life and his own hunger and thirst were satisfied. The accomplishment of the mission which he had left heaven to perform strengthened the Savior for his labor and lifted him above the necessities of humanity. To minister to a soul hungering and thirsting for the truth was more meaningful or grateful to him than eating or drinking. It was a comfort, a refreshment to him. Again, the Savior's own words bring the thought further home in Matthew chapter 24, verse 44 verse and 45. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? The Spirit of Prophecy adds in Acts of the Apostles, page 365, paragraph 1, that God's ministers are to learn Christ's method of labor, that they may bring from the storehouse of his word that which will supply the spiritual needs of those for whom they labor. Thus only can they fulfill their trust. With this understanding of the storehouse, it is impossible to escape the conclusion that the storehouse is the repository of present truth to be disseminated to God's people first, to them, and to the world around them. This is why Abraham and Jacob, of whom we have tithing records from, were still in full compliance with this principle, though there may not have been a physical storehouse near them. This is also why Jesus had a treasurer, Judas of course, who also betrayed him and why the early apostles collected tithes and offerings even though they were expressly commanded to go first to the lost sheep of Israel. Shouldn't they have been returning tithes to the Israelite leadership at that time? Referring back to the quote of in Acts of the Apostles, page 365, the only way the leadership could have fulfilled their sacred trust was to ensure that they were meeting the spiritual needs of the people, which could only be done with the present truth or the meat in due season for that time. This the apostles obviously had, the death and resurrection of Christ. Therefore, if you were living in that day and wanted to help your people from certain ruin and doom which Jesus had predicted, you were obligated to support with your tithes and offerings ministers preaching the present truth for that time. To do otherwise would actually be fighting against God, His truth, and refusing to save your brethren from the impending curse on God's people. We hope these are a blessing to you and God bless.